Welcome to the MRI Portfolio Optimization Webinar, organized by healthmanagement.org. MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging, is a powerful diagnostic tool in clinical medicine. However, many patients fear the scanner due to sincere space restrictions and noise. In this webinar, we will look into strategies on how to maximize the value and the output of MRI by utilizing this advancing technology. Our speakers will specifically discuss the advantage of an open MRI and how it can enhance both value and output. An open MRI design enhances patient comfort, allows family or friends to be near their loved ones, and offers more options in patient positioning. Open MRIs are also more cost-effective with lower upfront and maintenance costs. This and much more will be discussed in this webinar. We would like to thank ASG Paramet, one of the world's leading vendors in truly open MRIs, making this event possible. And now, as our first speaker, let me introduce you Professor Penny Goland from the University of Nottingham. She can be considered as one of the top experts in MRI worldwide. Her career goal is to develop quantitative methods in MRI and to use these to answer key questions in biomedicine. Thank you very much for the uh, lovely introduction. So, um, as you said, I've been working in MRI for a very long time, and uh, I think it is now time for open MRI. So I'm going to uh, divide this talk into three sections. I'm going to talk about why I think this is useful for uh, clinical imaging, both in terms of standard uh, MRI and also new clinical information. And finally, I'm going to talk about the area which is really my area of expertise, which is in using the open scanner for experimental medicine. So I'm a physicist, so this isn't really for me to talk about, but it's fairly obvious to me as a human being and somebody who knows how much <coughs> stress MRI can cause people, um, that this is a much more friendly and unclaustrophobic and... Um, human environment and extended clinical MRI scanner. Um, later on, I'm going to show some spine scans. My own daughter um, has been in MRI scans for a long while, and I'll show you one of her scans later. Uh, when she was age of 18, needed a clinical scan, she was terrified. <clears throat> and I was um, really astonished, you know, somebody who knew all about MRI scanners, knew they were safe, but she didn't want to have one. So I know that um, this will be a better environment for patients. I also think that it will be um, sometimes easier for positioning, not always, but for some of the sort of more rapid sort of screening studies, you could imagine a setup that could make a very quick positioning possible. But more importantly than that, to me as a researcher, is that this um, geometry opens up the possibility of providing new clinical information. And specifically, it provides us with a whole new dimension in MRI, allows us to look at the effects of position and gravity on the human body. So we aren't limited to this supine position of somebody lying down flat. Clearly, our bodies work in a gravitational field. We have evolved this way, and it's important to be able to study people under the effects of gravity. So this is an example from the AFG website, and this is our own data um, collected early on when we started using the scanner. And clearly one of the things you can do in this scanner that you couldn't possibly do in a standard MRI scanner is just look at the effects of normal positioning, normal gravity on joints and standard movements in joints. Look at the effects of um, repositioning on the way the body is functioning. One of the areas that we're most interested in Nottingham for clinical research is the use of the scanner in uh, respiratory medicine. 
patients with respiratory disease actually find it very hard to lie supine, or some respiratory diseases, I should say. And so uh, it's, it actually becomes impossible to scan them lying down. And my clinical colleagues have told me recently that the need for uh, non-invasive ways of looking at the lungs has increased recently, not so much because obviously we need to scan patients with COVID, but now there's the risk that's associated with actually doing lung function tests means they're more keen to be able to image the lung rather than do standard um, uh, clinical measures. So this is a study we've done looking simply at the um, shape of the diaphragm in COPD and a number of other conditions. And these are um, clearly uh, aesthetical images through the human body. This is the liver, this is the lung. And we're looking at the shape of the diaphragm here, um, inspiration and expiration, supine and sitting, the same subject. And we've done this in the study of a number of patients, healthy controls in different patient groups to look for changes in the way the diaphragm functions in disease. And this would be clearly impossible, really, with any other modality, not only MRI, but um, there are no other imaging modalities that give us this resolution upright. But the area that I'm really um, interested in myself is and uh, my own research is the use of this scanner in experimental medicine. We do studies where we look at the dynamics of the human body. So this is a study of somebody um, doing muscular activity in their lower legs. And we you combine this activity with looking at the uh, spectroscopy from their muscles. Now, the question is, can we do this in a much more physiologically normal position, which would be, of course, standing up? So this image um, comes from the Centre for Hip Health, um, showing a person standing up in an MRI scanner. This is an image of somebody in this position, but this is my daughter when she was about six, lying in a, a whole body scanner. Clearly this would be impossible in um, a standard scanner for a normal adult human being, uh, at, least, <laughs> at least for most of them, I'm sure. Um, so being able to look at the joints in uh, uh, l large um, uh, angles, and be able to look, particularly, this is a static image, but to be able to look at the movements of the joints is an important possibility with this scanner. Another area that I actively work in is gastrointestinal function. And we've been looking at GI function now for a very long time at Notting Nottingham. And this is an image of the stomach emptying. So here are the lungs again, here's the um, heart, uh, liver, the heart, and here's the stomach. And you can see it emptying or at least appearing to empty there's a whole story about what's actually going on here but it's being mixed and ground in the pylorus here now this person was image standing up because that's oh, sorry so this person was image lying down because that's all we um can do at the moment or could do until we have this scanner and one of the big questions is how does lying down affect gi function because obviously we would not normally eat lying down and we've done quite a lot of studies to investigate this and to find ways of overcoming any changes, for instance, when meals layer in your stomach. But it would obviously be better to study people sitting up whilst eating. So here's the stomach. And just to um, zoom in, here's an image of the stomach that we've collected off the paramed scanner. And um, actually, this is one of the studies we're desperate to restart as we're re reopening the centre now. This image... It's another image we got off the paramed scanner. You'll notice the signal to noise is lower, but this image was collected in a few seconds, um, very, very quickly, to allow us to study the dynamics of the gut much more rapidly. And we want to take this sequence to use it in the pelvis. So in conclusion, um, I believe MRI has potential to simplify clinical imaging, enable new clinical studies, and to provide a tool a unique tool to study human dynamics in vivo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Goland. It was a wonderful speech. To all listening to this webinar, we will have afterwards a question and answer session. And please cast all your questions. As our next speaker, we have Dr. Aaron B. Montgomery. He is in charge of a fully open MRI clinic group. His interests include vascular interventions and liver disease causing portal hypertension. A warm welcome to Dr. Montgomery. Thank you so much. Uh, 
It is uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm happy to share our development of our company called uh, Innovative MRI. And Innovative MRI was started in Pensacola, Florida. Um, we uh, are kind of up here in the upper right-hand corner of Florida. Since we started this, we have placed one down in Orlando with uh, Nikki down here. And now we have one up in the upper right-hand corner of Florida. The, uh, it all started with using the pyramid magnet. This magnet showed an open design, but it also gave us the ability to uh, do weight bearing, which I really became involved with because of you know, having a patient misdiagnosed because they weren't under any stress. So we took this magnet and we created a nice tranquil environment. Um, look at these pictures there, what this magnet is looking at or and what you would be looking at is the Pensacola Bay. There's a fountain out there and kids are playing in the fountain. So we've created a tranquil environment. Our staff is very instructed to be very supportive, very uh, compassionate to the patient. We also empower our technicians to you know, listen to the patient and say, maybe we need to scan the patient in a different way than just your normal uh, MRI. So by doing that, we are able to show the pathology. So, you know, with our magnet, one of the big things is claustrophobia. We get a ton of patients that are just claustrophobic. You know, five to seven percent of the world's population has severe claustrophobia. And there was also a study saying that having an MRI performed could be the triggering factor, factor to start a patient with a lifelong uh, issue with claustrophobia. So, um, we are seeing patients that had refused this picture here. You have the spinal cord tethered down to the tailbone. Uh, that's not normal. That is usually diagnosed uh, early in life. This person was in their 60s. Uh, again, you look at how crooked the spine is, and they did not go to an MRI because they were scared of it. Um, it's amazing that this person could go this far in life with a back that looked that bad. Um, so again, there's you know, the views. We started doing children. Um, this is a child that was, I believe, six years old. Um, there's no motion artifact on this. The mother was sitting right at the foot of the scanner. The child was sitting up, looking at the mother, being comforted, and we have this whole study completed without any motion artifact, and do such does have some sinus issues. Um, you know, another thing about this magnet, which was kind of a bonus, was, you know, dealing with patients with congestive heart failure, as well as uh, COPD, uh, patients that cannot lie flat due to cancers and bone pain. Um, also, we have a, we're in a military area, so we have a lot of patients with PTSD. Um, so being able to offer them an open environment has worked great. The, um, you know, whole idea of positional MRI was kind of always questioned, even though we did it in x-rays where we would do flexion extension, we would do all these different studies, but when it came to CT and MRI, they did not do it um, because they couldn't. The machine wouldn't allow it. Now that we have this option, these images are available and they're showing more of the pathology. And, you know, I'm going to quickly go through these uh, slides of, you know, the signs behind it, the data that's been put out. Um, but, you know, here are some examples. Here's a patient. We see there's a problem at uh, C5, C6 here, 
And then we go, well, okay, that doesn't look too bad. And then once the patient arches back, which is where their neck hurt, we see disc bulges appearing here as well as here. Uh, again, here we're a little out of alignment. The patient moves their head forward, and we see how this moves forward on this level. Uh, again, here this patient is laying uh, in kind of a 75 degree position, and then we stand them up and we see, whoa, there's a problem there. So, uh, you know, we started scanning all our patients at 75 degrees. That's where they feel the most comfortable. Um, and when we have patients, we will, you know, ask them where it hurts. And sometimes we will say, okay, let's lay them down, get a baseline, and then stand them up and see what all these changes are. Um, so there's a little more of the science for it. There's a little more comparisons with it. Um, again, you can see how these disc bulges just get accentuated uh, with uh, weight bearing. Here are the axial images. You can see the spinal canal doesn't look great, but it's okay. And then here it looks horrible. Again, you know, comparison between the two canals. Uh, Again, you see, it oh, doesn't look too bad, and then we have a lot of issues going on. So, um, we know that uh, we are seeing you know, worse cases with weight bearing um, and with uh, how the uh, spine uh, is in different positions. So, you know, there's a lot of cases where uh, we've talked to patients, we have finally shown the pathology where the previous MRIs didn't show it. And um, these people were happy to do testimonials for us uh, to kind of show how this has helped them. And you can go onto our website here and look at them and see their, you know, their whole take of this experience. Um, you know, we started out with uh, mainly just doctor referrals in a small town. Uh, where the majority of the physician population was employed by uh, the hospital systems. We started showing the pathology that started getting us to you know, more and more business. It also caught the eye of the legal system, uh, which was trying to show the true you know, pathology of the patient with you know, potentially lifelong complications. So we have actually turned from more insurance into uh, personal injury, which is the PI here. And you can see our PI scans have increased throughout the years. Of course, you know, our total volume has just continued to jump and jump and jump. And that's because people are trying to find their true pathology. Um, our revenue has increased by about 250%. Uh, we're now open 14 hours a day, six days a week. Uh, we are considering opening on Sundays, but uh, I would like to uh, keep that day as a free day for all our employees, but we will see what we need to do about that. Um, so we are still you know, getting patients through as fast as we can. Uh, but we will sometimes do 18 scans a day. So, you know, the way we've operated our newest location is in Jacksonville. This is a partnership with the private radiology group. Um, and that is how we are you know, planning to move forward with various partnerships. We have the business model already established. We have, you know, the contacts and the way, um, you know, the protocols for running this magnet. So, uh, you know, we're always looking for growth and uh, we really do love the old weight bearing and positional technology. So, um, the way I've kind of approached it to the, um, you know, fellow physicians is we're not going to say we are better than a three Tesla magnet, but if your pain is where you're sitting, standing, turning, twisting, we can show that where they can. So here's some of the references on all the uh, stuff that I put out. 
Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining in with us and uh, hope to hear from you. Please contact us by our website. Thank you. As our next speaker, we have Martin Beckett. He is Chief Operation Officer of InHealth UK, a leading imaging group operating within the United Kingdom. His extensive experience is managing the safety critical services in the private sector and in the NHS. Martin is driving high value technical installations and he was involved in the development of multi-site teams delivering high quality services. Thank you very much, Christian. I'm just going to share my slides and hopefully they will come through. Can you see my slides, Penny? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So um, thank you for inviting me today. Um, a little bit about InHealth. As Christian says, InHealth is a large organization within the United Kingdom that supports both private hospitals and the National Health Service here. We run, uh, amongst many of our businesses, we, we own and run something like 100 to 110 MRI units across the country. Some of those are multi-sited. Uh, some of those are multi-scanners on one site. And we have something like 60 uh, MRI scanners in, in mobile trailers that go up and down the country visiting various hospitals every day. So um, we've always had an open scanner within our, within our team, but more recently have, have purchased a business which have got the MR opens that we've been talking about today. So really, I want to talk to you about how we see the value of these and how we've incorporated them within our strategic view of MRI within the United Kingdom as we move forward. Um, so I'm just trying to go down the screen. So if, if we talk about Upright MRI, um, we've had Upright MRI opened its first Upright scanner in London in 2006, and it was the first centre in the country at that time providing Upright MRI. Uh, they now have, or we now have, sorry, uh, four sites across the United Kingdom. Uh, we, we acquired Upright MRI in February 2019 and added it to our Croydon location already. So we have four locations now in the United Kingdom uh, delivering uh, 0.5 Tesla, 0.6 Tesla, and a 1.2 Tesla uh, upright and open MRI scanners. Uh, and for those of you that know the United Kingdom, um, we've split across uh, one in London and the other three uh, in Leeds, Birmingham, uh, sorry, two in London, the, the London Centre and the Croydon Centre. Team of about 21, uh, including both uh, radiographers, supported by our 13 radiologists who work for us under what we call practicing privileges in the United Kingdom. Um, delivering patients for a number of people, whether it be um, NHS, private, medical, legal, as, as Dr. Aaron was talking about. So what do we use this, this unique service for? We provide a service to patients unable to undergo conventional MRI. And I think that's the ultimate point of what this technology is about, is you have got patients who are often referred as a final choice. They've tried two, three, four times with conventional MRI. They've had sedation. They've still failed. And, and they are very much at the end of where they can actually um, get some kind of diagnosis to help them in their recovery pathway as, as we move forward with them. We provide a specialised and bespoke service. So most of our patients are nervous, apprehensive, and demonstrate unusual behaviour as a result of these feelings. I, I think you cannot underestimate the nervousness and the apprehension that all of these patients have as they come into this service for the very reason that they've been in other areas for imaging and it's failed or you know, the claustrophobia has taken over and, and they are feeling really, really nervous now. We're all about achieving positive outcomes for our patients, which requires patience and, and um, perseverance. It's a word I can never pronounce. I can spell it, but can't pronounce it. Um, and being able to adapt to individual needs of the patients. So we don't have, unlike conventional MRI, where you'll have appointments, lots of 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, we don't have appointment slots within our open and our bright centers. It's, it's tailored around the individual patients. But typically for those that don't know about upright or open, you are typically looking at, if you look at conventional MRI for 20 minutes for a knee scan, you're probably looking at 45 minutes on, on an upright scanner for a claustrophobic patient. And those are the kind of times frames we work to. Across our um, four sites, we're seeing about 6,000 patients a year. That's across all four sites, which for those of you that know conventional MRI well, you'll be looking at 10 to 12,000 patients a year on one scanner. So your throughput is significantly lower but you are dealing with a very, very niche uh, cohort of patients here that have got some very, very bespoke um, uh, conditions to consider. We achieve a 98% scan completion success rate, uh, which considering again, the cohort of patients, I think is extremely, extremely um, high level. 
And that's really down to the radiographers on the ground doing the work. And they're the ones who are spending the time with these patients and, and taking them through their, their scan. Within the United Kingdom, approximately 50% of our patients are funded by the NHS. Uh, funding can be a long process, which doesn't help with the anxiousness of the patients. So we've, we've had referrals come in that have taken us 24 hours to get funding approved. We've had referrals come through that can take um, 24 days or even three or four months to get approved. So it doesn't help with the anxiousness of the patient, but all the time we're keeping the patients informed as we go through. We then obviously, as, as Dr. Ann was talking, um, mentioned and recognised by major insurers, and we have a cohort of patients who are self-funded and also the medical legal route for those people that have been in trauma accidents. So why do we as in-health see Upright as, as an in integral part of our service? As I say, we're a large organisation with, with a significant number of MRI scanners around the country, but you do have that cohort of patient. Even with wide-bore MRIs, you still have that cohort of patient who cannot cope with a routine MRI scan. We still have um, hospitals in the United Kingdom that will give an adult a general anaesthesia to perform an MRI scan. And we see this as an important step forward now to be able to stop that kind of risk factor occurring for these patients. So unlike traditional MRI, as, as uh, Professor Penny and Dr. Allen have already taken through, um, it's not a case of having to, to lay down for these. We can have patients sitting, we can have patients standing. And from a patient experience, there is nothing immediately in front of them or above you during the MRI scans. Unlike the, the normal open scanners, which are typically donut, as you saw in the pictures earlier from, from our, my colleagues here, they have certainly got um, openness, which is the most important bit for, for these patients. There are some, uh, some compromises, of course, as we know, traditional MRI scanners are 1.5 Tesla or 3 Tesla. Uh, the upright scanners we have are of 0.6 and 0.5 Tesla. Um, this can give you some uh, limitations on the anatomical definition, but working with our specialized radiologists and with our uh, frontline radiographers, the protocols are tweaked for each individual patient and the technique adapted to ensure we can get a comprehensive set of images to give that medical report that that patient needs. And the unique design of the, of the upright MRI scanners has uh, many of its own benefits already spoken uh, by Penny and Aaron. So they're able to simply walk in and be scanned in a variety of positions, um, whether it be weight bearing or positional um, flexion extensions, for example. This allows the patients to be scanned in the exact position they experience the pain. So for spines and joints, this is quite important. Uh, and as I said earlier, often they are a last chance for imaging to support the diagnosis. And one of our key aims now with, with the service within InHealth is to move away from uh, working with those hospitals, sorry, to move away from having to give general anesthesia to patients, because as we all know, that was just additional clinical risk for the patient. So using some of the pictures that we've got of, of patients in various angles within the scanner, so whether it be uh, semi-recumbent, uh, even lying on their side for a brain scan, the, the benefits of the upright scanner is, is really unique in what we can do for our patients now. Um, one of our centre managers in Birmingham, bless her, with her own spine, really following on from the, from the images that, that Penny had earlier, um, just in the different positions we can have them and how that can, can help our medical colleagues come out with a diagnosis, diagnosis for these patients. So where do we see um, Upright within the in-health group? We have certainly, in the um, 18 months or so that we've owned uh, Upright scanning, we've become a lot busier in our centres. Uh, clinicians are now readily wanting to use Upright technology, both for flexion, extension, gravitational effects, but also for their true claustrophobic patients. We've linked directly with a number of the acute hospital groups in the UK now and offer a direct referral service so that we can get over this uh, funding timeline and increasing the anxiousness of, of anxiousness of the patients. And we're developing further marketing for our services now within the United Kingdom. Now that we've settled upright within the in-health group, we're now looking at ways that we can develop this further, including, indeed including the, the review of whether we need additional scanners in the UK as we move forward over the next few years. And that's it for me. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much for your great speech, Martin. I have already at least two interesting questions, which we will cast at the end of this session. The next speaker is Marco Bellardinelli, and he is the MRI Business Unit Director at ASG Superconductors. ASG is specialized in designing and manufacturing of innovative superconductors, and of course, MRI systems. A warm welcome to Marco. Thank you, thank you very much, Christian. Before I actually get started and the slides load, uh, are loading up, let me just allow me to thank Professor Golan, Mr. Beckett, and Dr. Montgomery for accepting our 
invitation today and for giving us the opportunity to, to listen to their, to their talks. Obviously, I too, I too plan to talk about MRI and, uh, and our solution, but before I do that, I just want to give you a, a brief idea of who we are as a company and, uh, and as a group. As uh, ASG Superconductors, we are one of uh, the largest magnet manufacturer in, uh, in Europe. And we do manufacture magnets for, uh, for a variety of, of uh, applications, for guiding magnets for a large hydron collider at CERN in Geneva, to toroidal field coils for plasma confinement in what is today the largest nuclear fusion project in the world. I mean, I hope that you appreciate the dimension of that coil on the right upper corner. Those tiny little dots that you see at the end are actually real people. Uh, and then, of course, we do manufacture magnets for uh, proton therapy. I'm positive that you are familiar with the with IBA. And we do design ultra-high field uh, magnets. The one you see in the slide is an 11.7 Tesla designed for, uh, specifically for, uh, for brain study. And we have delivered one at the NIH in Bethesda, and one is on its way to to South Korea. Uh, now we do this, the way we do this, uh, we're organizing three different business units that no longer than a couple of years ago were three independent companies uh, working and operating under the same umbrella. But basically what, what we do is that at the very beginning, we develop and fine tune these helium free superconducting technology that we own. Uh, at the center, is where we do have all the know-how and uh, competences to actually design and manufacture magnets from start to finish. And at the end is where we do combine the helium-free technology with the know-how and competences in MRI because we want to, to play an active role with uh, our own solution in the MRI, in the MRI field. Now, by now, I'm, uh, I, I'm sure that you are familiar with the, with the design of our technology. So let me just uh, uh, tell what we can actually do uh, to increase the value of an hospital or uh, an imaging center or an healthcare organization that wants to run uh, an MRI system. Um, what I'm about to say now, it's not in any uh, order of importance. It's just all the um, uh, items and, uh, and things that we needed and wanted to put together to, to build something that wasn't yet available in the market. So first of all, uh, the technology. What we wanted to do is getting rid of helium and all the complications that, that come with it. As you know, helium uh, has become nowadays harder and harder to find, and therefore it's uh, even more, more expensive. So when a magnet, when a traditional superconducting magnet quenches, that's not only a, there's not only a problem of uh, being down, it's also a very expensive one to solve because of the refill of helium. With our technology, being helium free, uh, that's obviously not a problem anymore. Uh, but I mean, truth be said, it took us a while to, to develop this kind of technology and to fine, to fine tune it. But I mean, 2020 was actually the, the year when uh, we hit the million, one million hours uh, operation. And for a company like ours, I would say this is uh, quite a, of a, an achievement. Um, the second thing that we had in mind was, yes, that we wanted to give uh, the radiologists and the clinicians a um, different set of information that weren't uh, available uh, when uh, you scan the patient in the traditional supine position. I mean, this is something that uh, Penny, Aaron, and Martin already discussed about. But um, again, what's important is that you want to get the diagnosis right, and you want to get the diagnosis right the first time to avoid all those hidden costs that are associated with a misdiagnosis or even worse, a wrong, a wrong treatment. Uh, 
So again, we addressed and tried to solve this issue by giving the possibility of scanning the patient in uh, upright mode, in weight-bearing mode, because what we have found uh, over the years by working with our customers is that when you are able to scan the patient in the position he feels the pain or in the position of symptoms, more often than not, the diagnosis changes and you are able to provide a, a better service to the patient and therefore to the, to the overall community. Uh, the third aspect that we took into consideration, this is special studies. This is more mainly dedicated to research institution. Uh, and again, uh, Penny gave you a very uh, clear understanding of the things that you can, uh, you can do with, uh, with our system. Uh, needless to say, there are other applications that are under development and under evaluations that are not standard and um, uh, possible on traditional scanners. But just, again, to, make, to name a few, we have a couple of customers in the in UK uh, that were contacted by both the European Space Agency and the Formula One Association because they wanted to evaluate the effect of compression on neck and the spine. And so they basically put real astronauts and a real Formula One driver in their working position inside the magnet to, to be scanned. Now, this is not something that you would do uh, every day, of course, but it gives you uh, the idea of what is actually, is actually possible. Uh, now, last but not least, uh, obviously, we had uh, the patients uh, in mind since, uh, since day one. Uh, think about it. Uh, when the patients go to an hospital or to an, an imaging center to get an MRI examinations done, um, you can, uh, he is going to find basically uh, the same scanner or a different version of it everywhere. Um, I mean, some system can be newer, some other system can be a little older, but in the end, it's the same technology and the same solution. So the imaging center or the hospital, if he wants to differentiate himself from the competition, he has to work on everything but the MRI. So they can make, I mean, the waiting room cleaner and nicer, of course. They can work on the registration process and make it smoother, and they can have shorter waiting time for the patients. I mean, don't get me wrong. These are very uh, important things, uh, but they are easily uh, copied, so to speak. And, uh, and in the end, the patient would still undergo the traditional MRI um, as in any other centers. Now, uh, with our solution, they can differentiate themselves, of course. Now, I understand that for some uh, patients, you will always need the uh, 1.5 Tesla, the, even the 3T in the certain circumstances, uh, uh, that's crystal clear, of course, but for, um, I, I'm not gonna say the majority, but for many other patients, you definitely don't need that. And we wanted to give uh, the patient a different option, a more comfortable one, and the imaging centers, the opportunity to stand out from, uh, from their competitors. Uh, I think that with, with this, I'm, uh, I'm done with the presentation. So thank you very much again for uh, being a speaker here and to all the attendees to, to be with us today. Thank you, Marco, for your wonderful talk. And I can really imagine myself standing in this large magneto. This was absolutely impressive. So I would like to thank all our speakers and please let us come now to the question and answer session. My first question goes to Professor Goland. Penny, in your research programs, are you using the MR Open in a standard configuration or do you have the complete access to the programming platform? So the data I've shown you, the uh, images of the lung, the stomach, and actually we're doing uh, pelvimetry at the moment, 
in pregnancy and we're looking at uh, organ deformation for um, an industrial partner. All of that is being done with the commercially available off-the-shelf scanner. Um, we are also working with, with uh, ASG Paramed to, uh, first of all, develop multi-nuclear capabilities on the scanner. So that is to allow the scanner to image something other than water. So that's to allow us to look at xenon in the lungs. Um, I haven't shown any of that. And um, I'm particularly myself personally interested in working with Paramed to um, allow very fast imaging. So that as of the very last image I showed, a very rapid image of the stomach. So we can look at dynamic processes in the body. So that requires a bit of changes to the scanner. And we ha have got access via a, a very nice collaboration with um, ASG. So in short, you can do a lot with what's off the shelf. And obviously, as always, you can do more if you start tinkering. The next question is for Dr. Montgomery. And actually, I have two. First of all, how do you deal with the devastating consequences of a hurricane? And secondly, from the clinical point of view, I understood that the possibility to see the pathology and the position of symptoms is a very important information. Now, are the images acquired directly in upright position or are they normally acquired supine first and then in a standing or sitting position? Well, the um, hurricane, um, that brought in, trying to convert it, but we had about eight centimeters of water come through our building. Um, and with the pyramid system, there is a pit. Um, so part of the magnet is actually under the floor. So um, the uh, magnets do not do well in uh, salt water. Um, so luckily for Paramed, I think they just sold another magnet. Um, <laughs> as far as our imaging, we empower our technicians uh, to talk with the patient and decide what needs to be done. We're not dealing with radiation, so excess imaging is not harmful to the patient. So. With that, we will often do the basic um, MRI where typically they're in a recumbent position, uh, so they're relaxed. When you stand the patient, when you flex the patient, they tend to have a lot of movement. Um, so we like to get the nice, you know, motion-free images and then put them in a position that hurts them or is uncomfortable to them to then show the true pathology. So, yes, we always kind of get a baseline and then move them. The next question is for Mr. Beckett. Martin, you said that 50% of the patients are coming from the NHS. Now, is the reimbursement for the upright examinations specific instead of the standard one? Um, it is indeed. So, so in the United Kingdom, we have uh, a thing called the NHS tariffs, uh, where most things that are carried out are with, with a patient, there is a, a set price for. With the upright and the open work, that, that isn't set. And in fact, what we try and do is we try and preempt this, as I said earlier, about the funding uh, process. So we try and have contracts in place with the acute trust that we're working with so that they can just refer patients in. So that the price is set as a, as a discussion between us and the acute trust as you'd expect on commercial terms based around you know, the typical volumes and the, and the turnaround times and everything else that they will want. My next question goes to Marco. Do you see the MR Open Evo as a standalone scanner or do you think that it could be working in association of a 1.5 traditional scanner? Uh, I mean, that's actually a, a good question, but the answer is going to be, uh, it depends. Uh, and it depends that we do have customers that are using uh, our system as a standalone solution. Uh, and they've been uh, quite successful in differentiating themselves from, uh, from the competition. And that's, I mean, they basically prove that the model works. And uh, we do at the same time other customers that combine it with uh, field magnet. 
uh, at that would, uh, I mean, as I was saying uh, before, uh, there are certain examinations that you need the high field for, and uh, it would be stupid for us uh, to deny it. So by having both uh, systems uh, available at the same time, that would absolutely help the, the imaging centers or the, the entity to cover basically almost 100% of the needed procedures. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining the MRI Portfolio Optimization DigiConf from healthmanagement.org. We are very grateful that you joined us today and hopefully you have advanced your knowledge about this most important technology. Thank you very much indeed. You're Christian Marold from healthmanagement.org.